morning, everybody. Welcome to Holy Trinity. Uh, I'm Reverend Becky. Uh, Deacon Patty will be up here in just a minute. Um, but this morning, I wanted to take time uh, to introduce our musicians to our people on YouTube and Facebook. They've been hearing these glorious sounds for the last, what, three weeks or so. If you guys want to come up. Um, they have been hearing these glorious sounds, but they have no idea uh, what the faces are, who the faces are that are, are creating them. So I wanted to take a moment to introduce. So this is our trumpeter, uh, James. Uh, and James, you're 21? That looks like you. 19, okay. That makes me feel a little better. Um, and this is Gary, uh, and he has been our pianist. So. Uh, it is father and son duo, so thank you both for your music. So this morning, uh, let me give you a quick update on a couple of our folks before we start the service. Um, so Izzy is doing a lot better in the hospital. Um, he was able to uh, skip one of his uh, treatments one of his dialysis treatments, uh, and they're talking about a possible release date in the upcoming, thank you for reminding me, Audrey. Ooh, now people will be able to hear. Um, so they're talking about a release date soon for him. So please keep him in your prayers. Uh, and then also, um, Tim is still in rehab, but Again, they're talking about letting him come home soon as well. So please continue to pray that they will both be home safe uh, very soon. Uh, so let's go ahead and stand and join together in worship this morning. from Romans. I appeal 
appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Please stand. acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. But who do you say that I am? This is a question that Jesus asks his disciples and that I want us to look at today. Let me tell you some of the answers that I've heard to this question that I've post posed to people. They said, my personal Lord and Savior, the Son of God, he is God incarnate. He's my life, the song I sing, my everything. He's my friend, he's my homeboy, my rock, my comforter, my coach, my teacher, my example, the co-pilot next to me. The list could go on and on. At some point or another, we've probably all been told who Jesus is. Maybe you heard it from your priest or from teachers or parents or friends. Maybe you read about it in books or Sunday school lessons or on bumper stickers. Maybe you saw it on Facebook, read it on the internet, or heard it in a song. Some of the answers may have been helpful, some were not. But regardless, the question remains, who do you say that I am? Now, this isn't a pop quiz. But instead, it's a question that we should be asking ourselves every day, every moment of every day. And it's also one that I don't intend to answer for you. Not because I'm being mean, but because I can't. Each of us has to answer this question for ourselves. Don't worry though, it's not a theology or an intense Bible exam. If anything, it's more an examination of our lives. 
I don't think Jesus is asking us to just parrot back the answers that we've heard or read. Maybe that's why he pushes the disciples to move forward from what they've been hearing around them. That he is John the Baptist, or Elijah, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. To what they're hearing within themselves. But who do you say that I am? This isn't an easy question. I wonder if we sometimes too readily accept and settle for a Sunday Jesus. You know, the easy, feel-good, sentimental answers. The problem is life isn't always easy or feel-good or sentimental. It's one thing to say who Jesus is here in Barta, Florida at Holy Trinity on a Sunday morning in relatively safe and comfortable situations. It's a very different thing to say who he is outside of that, though. The question is never just merely academic or abstract. It always has a context. Here's what I mean. Who do we say Jesus is in the wake of increasing political stress in our country? Who do we say Jesus is as coronavirus spreads, as refugees cry out in need, as people in our town go to bed hungry, as we live amidst domestic violence or work for a wage that can't support our family? Who do we say Jesus is when a loved one dies, or the doctor gives news that we didn't want to hear, or our lives seem to be falling apart? Who do we say Jesus is when we're faced with decisions that have no easy answers, when the night is dark and the storms of life just overwhelm us? Who do we say Jesus is when faithfulness means risking it all and taking a stand against a louder and seemingly more powerful majority? Using the context of these few examples, what does it mean to say that Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior, my example, or my friend? What does it mean to say that Jesus is my life, or the song I sing, or my teacher? Here's my point. Who we say Jesus is has everything to do with who we are and who we will become. In some ways, our answer says as much or more about us than about Jesus. It reveals how we live, who we stand up for, what we stand up for. It guides our decisions and determines our actions, the actions that we take and the words we speak. It describes the expectations we have of Jesus. It reveals the depth of our motivation for and commitment to following him, a motivation and commitment that will be challenged by next week's gospel in which Jesus invites us to take up our cross and to die with him. Jesus' question isn't so much about getting the right answer as it is about witnessing and testifying to God's life and love and presence in our lives and in the world around us. It's less about our mind and more about our heart. It's grounded in love more than understanding, and it moves us from simply knowing about Jesus to knowing him personally and intimately, having a relationship with him. In some sense, there's no once-for-all correct answer. We're always living into this question. Who Jesus was when I was a child was different than who he was to me as a teenager or in my 20s and who he is for me today. Hopefully who he is for me next year will be different than who he is for me today. It's not that Jesus has changed. I have changed. He has changed me. We're constantly asking ourselves this question, and in doing so, we not only discover him anew, we discover who we are in him anew. Sometimes when we go to answer this question, we might discover a disconnect between the Sunday Jesus who we sing and talk about for an hour and the life we live the other 167 hours of our week. Our words and our actions sometimes don't align. 
There's no congruity or integrity. And I don't say that as a judgment about anyone, but just an acknowledgement of how hard it can be to recognize and live the truth that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. More than once, I myself have fallen into the gap between Sunday Jesus kind of answers and the circumstances of my life and world. Sometimes my answers were too simple, too easy, too small. They were no match for the complexities of life and the pain of the world. Other times my life hasn't reflected what I've said about Jesus, about who he is. Sometimes I kept quiet when I should have spoken up. Other times I was passive when I should have done something. And looking back, though, whenever I have fallen into that gap, it was usually because I was trying to play it safe, which, I hate to break it to all of us, almost never works with God. There's nothing safe about the question that Jesus poses to us. How could there be? There's nothing safe about the life that Jesus calls us to live. There's nothing safe about the reckless abandonment with which Jesus loves us. Jesus' life and presence among us calls into question almost everything in our lives, our world, the status quo, and business as usual. That's why we shouldn't answer his question too quickly or too simply or with too much certainty. But instead, we should always be praying and pondering about this question. After all, it's not so much a question to be figured out as it is a question to be lived out. Amen. Let's stand and together say the Nicene Creed found on page four of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He yes. has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Following Form 6, we offer prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, justice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, to the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For 
Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Greg, our bishop, Becky, our priest, Patty, our deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for our members Izzy, Tim, Holly, and Susie. We pray for our family and friends, for the family of Father Jim Gerhardt, Jerry, Don, Douglas, John, Cody, Tanya, Jeanette, Bev, Adam, Stephen, Al, Jim, Dalen, Rack, Susan, and Grace Ray. And we offer prayers for those not able to join us, especially today for Hattie and Vera. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for those who are serving our country. Matt, Jordan, Naomi, Hunter, Jamal, James, Ethan, Keith, and Mark. We pray for those deployed in service to our country, for Jenna. For the churches in our diocese, Holy Trinity Church, Fruitland Park, please pray for their search committee and process. And for St. Mark's Church, King City, please pray for the health and financial needs of the church and for the people rejoining together after the pandemic. We exalt, we will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you all. want to, you're, you may be seated, uh, we want to wish Dabney uh, a happy birthday this week. Let's do a little blessing for him. Let's pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Dabney as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Birthday boy. Oh, oh yeah. cool. Excellent. We have another birthday boy here in person. We're going to pray for Jim. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he fall, and in his heart, may thy peace which passes understanding abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, sir. Are there any other announcements? Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offering and come into his courts with praise.
Let's stand and together say the doxology found on page 7 in your bulletin. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints, into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! The gifts of God, for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal he Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And in reminder of Jesus' great love for us, let's stand and sing all about it. See you next week. Thanks, Dan.